This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Let's have a look at another example uh, with regards to a revaluation, but this time it involves a bit of a revaluation decrease. So what have we got? Uh, it wants us to go through there and look at the figures in the financial statement. So again, SFP, profit or loss, or the comprehensive income, uh, statements of change in equity. Uh, again, same company, Panama. Again, same year end. So is that the, the 31st of December 2015? So what have we got? It says on the 1st of January 2013, Panama purchased an item of property, plants and equipment for 12 million. Uh, it uses the revaluation model. Uh, the asset has zero residual value and is depreciated over, is it 10 years? Okay. Uh, something then happened at the 31st of December 2014. It was revalued to 14 million. Okay, uh, so it looks like it's been revalued upwards. I thought we said this involved the revaluation decrease. Well, to look at the decrease, we need to look at the increase first. Okay, uh, then what happens is once there was a revaluation upwards to 14 million, uh, there was then a revaluation downwards. To 8 million okay and that took place at the end of this year December 2015 and it says Panama has not taken the effect of the revaluation at December 2015 so the revaluation to 8 million in its financial statement so it has yet to do anything now in order to work out what they have to do we have to go back right to the very very start okay so again we're gonna have to go through and look at it in the same approach as the previous example we'll look at the narrative historic cost revaluation and the surplus okay so what we've got there is we look at the cost was that the first of the first 2013 shall we check yes it was first of january 2013 we bought it for 12 million and then we are going to depreciate it, aren't we? For 12 million over, was it 10 years? However, do just be careful. The next part where we need to work out the value of the asset is at December 2014. Okay, so we need to work out the carrying value at the 31st of December 2014. So is that two years? Okay, 13, 14. It took place at the end of 2014. So 12 divided by 10 is 1.2. Multiplied by 2 is there as 2.4, isn't it? Which gives me a carrying value. Is it there of 9.6? Okay. Uh, the revalued amount at 2014 was 14 million, wasn't it? So we can put in the 14 there. 14 less the 9.6, does that give me a surplus of 4.4? Okay, that would be the revaluation gain that in 2014 would have gone to your other comprehensive income. What we've got now is we now need to go through there, don't we? And look at how to account for this revaluation uh, at, is it the, the 31st of December? 2015 isn't it okay so what have we got well we will have now have depreciated this asset of 14 over the remaining life is that there of eight years okay so 14 divided by eight is there is that as 1.75 if you want you can make it 1.8 it's entirely up to you okay uh, 14 less than 1.75 it gives me a carrying value of 12.25. Uh, but we know that that's not the carrying value, is it? Okay. Yeah, what we've got there is that we have there, isn't it? The actual revalued amount at the 31st of December 2015. If memory serves me right, was it 8? Yeah, it's fallen to 8 million. Okay. So what we've got there is that there is an impairment of 4.25 million. Okay. 
So that's the impairment on the asset. Now we need to be a bit careful because any impairment on a revalued asset goes first of all to any revaluation surplus, doesn't it? So whatever's stored up within your other components of equity and then anything extra above that will go to your statement of profit or loss. So what you've got now, you've got to be careful. We need to go through and look at what was in the revaluation surplus at the end of the year. Okay. So what you've got there is depreciation uh, was 1.2 in the year, or would have been if we'd not re revalued it. Uh, so 1.2 versus 1.75 is at 0.55. So during the year, we would have made a surplus transfer of 0.55, which gives me that 4.4, pardon me, if I can work my calculator, is there is that 3.85, okay? That just causes me a little bit of an issue, doesn't it? Because I can only use 385 of that surplus to take account of all of the surplus and what you've got there is that the excess the balancing figure so 4.25 less the 3.85 the difference is that the 0.4 will go is it to your statement of profit or loss okay there we go okay which, which is pretty clever okay because uh, what you've got essentially is if we had not revalued it, it would have been, is it 8.4, the carrying value, we would have needed to have impaired it to 8. So we would have had an impairment through profit or loss, is it, there of the 0 0.4 million. Okay, let's just make that 8 a better looking 8, shall we? There we go. Okay, so what you're going to have there on your statement of financial position is you're going to have 8 as the value of the asset, the impaired value. Uh, in profit or loss, you are going to have, is it the 0 0.4 million? And then what you have there, again, through your other comprehensive income, will be the reduction in value of that asset. Okay. Uh, again, the depreciation is what you show on the statement of profit or loss. Okay. Uh, just to finish it off, I suppose we should try and put it all in, shouldn't we? Uh, to the financial statements. So within the statement of financial position, again, if we look at the non-current assets, your property, plant and equipment is there as $8 million. Okay. Uh, within the equity, we don't need to put anything in, do we? Uh, because the equity has gone in terms of the other components of equity with regards to the revaluation. There could be share capital, share premium, retained earnings, etc., but Let's not worry too much about that. Uh, the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Well, in profit or loss, don't forget, first of all, that we have your depreciation. Okay, so the depreciation for the year was at the 1.75 million. Uh, we also have the impairment. So the impairment is there at 0.4 million. And then in your other comprehensive income, you have your revaluation loss. Uh, back to the working there. Your revaluation loss is there. Is it at 3.85? Okay. So at 3.85 goes through OCI because that's where the previous gain was held and that's where for, therefore uh, it would be taken to okay uh, again let's just finish it up totally uh, maybe going a bit too far because it's very rare that you have to put in the statement of changes in equity but again we'll look at it there in terms of retained earnings and is it your other components of equity so we've got our brought forward. We don't know what the brought forward retained earnings were, but we do know what the brought forward 
other component of equity was. Uh, it was there at 4.4. Uh, you've then got, is it that transfer, whereby 0.55, I think was it, came out of other components of equity and went in to your retained earnings. And then what you've got there is that the figures from the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. I don't know what the profit figure is for the year for retained earnings. But I do know that we took out, was it 3.85 from my other component of equity, which brings me down to nil at the end of the year. Again, I don't know what the retained earnings figure is because you need more information within the question. I think that's going a bit too far. Okay, but... I think it's good to go through there and give you a full comprehensive understanding, particularly at F2 level where essentially anything goes. OK, so make sure you're happy with that example. Uh, if you can do that, you can do anything with regards to PPE within the exam. You may even be able to do depreciation within the next video.